is Maria Trudnowski from Columbia University who will speak about the joint pass in tournaments. Uh, after the talk at 6.45, we will take Maria out for dinner at Evelyn's at 45 Eastern Avenue. You are all cordially invited to join us. If you'd like to join us, please let me know immediately after the talk. Thank you. All right, so <clears throat> thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm not sure if this uh, qualifies as experimental mathematics. Yeah. Hopefully, it's at least mathematics. <laughs> um, all right, so this is about these joint pass and tournaments, and I'll explain what that means. And this joint work with Alex Scott from Oxford and Paul Simon from this. All right, so <clears throat> there's a sort of set of uh, problems in graph theory, and they're called these joint pass problems. So what that means is, I give you a bunch of pairs of terminals, and I want to know, can you connect uh, you know, each terminal to the, to the other guy in its pair? Right, so I give you a bunch of pairs, S1, T1, S2, T2, SK, TK. And I want to connect S1 to T1, S2 to T2, SK to TK. And I want to do it in such a way that the, the different connections, the different uh, routes don't interfere. Uh, right, maybe a good way to think about it. Uh, uh, imagine uh, you operate a telephone company, and you know uh, he called him and she called her, and, and she called him, and you want to route the calls. Uh, so it's um, it's not just enough to uh, you know get all these guys connected to all those guys. You need more. You need that the correct person is connect is connected to uh, to to the person they called, and also you don't want for the calls to interfere. All right. So that's that's the setup. Uh, and uh, so let me call this solution to such a problem, problem, let me call it a linkage, right? So I have my pair of terminals and uh, they are somehow uh, appropriately connected to each other, let me call that a linkage. Now there are, so as uh, the way I told you the problem so far, uh, it's not sufficiently well defined yet, right? Why? Well, because of all these things. First of all, what's a graph? Is it a directed graph or is it a non-directed graph? Well, bo both make sense. You can ask this question in directed graphs, you can ask this question in undirected graphs. The second and kind of more uh, uh, maybe delicate question is, what does it mean disjoint? What does it mean that I don't want for the, for the roots to interfere, for the path to interfere? Well, so I may require vertex disjoint or I may require edge disjoint. And again, both, both make sense. And uh, the last point is, uh, uh, so, okay, if I'm interested in algorithms, I'm obviously interested in finding an algorithm with, a, with relatively low complexity. So then, what's k with respect to my complexity calculations, right? If I, if I have k terminals, is k fixed or is k part of the, of the input? All right, so these are, these are the different uh, things you need to specify in order to make the problem more, in, in order to make the problem precise, and I'll mention something about all of them. All right. So first of all, this is easy, this is easy. If k is not fixed, if k is part of the input, then the problem is epic complete. That's because that would solve uh, Hamilton cycle, Hamilton, yeah, Hamilton cycle problem, for example. Uh, so from now on, we assume that k is fixed. k is never part of the input. input right? Getting a, an algorithm that runs in time n to the, uh, to, two to the k, it's fine because k is fixed. OK. The next question was, is, is my graph directed or undirected? Well, like I said, both questions make sense, except that the undirected case uh, has been done a while ago. And the undirected case is actually deep. It's part of, uh, it's part of the robertson Seymour minor problem, minor project. Uh, and the poly is very big poly, right? Uh, no, the poly no. is not a big poly. It's oh. a computer or something. Oh, because something else is Simon. It's, the, some of the things, also Simon is an example right. of a poly algorithm. But, but this is not, this is oh, the right okay. yeah. um, so, so this is part of the graph minor project, and the way they solve both the vertex joint problem and the edge joint problem, they, uh, <coughs> excuse me, they basically always find the vertex that you can, that you can delete. So, I, the way they solve this problem is, is as follows. They try and find some dense part of the graph so that if I could connect into that dense part, then I can root everything any way I like. And in order to do that, in order to, to check if I can connect to the, to the dense part of the graph, what they do is they, they find what's called an irrelevant vertex. They prove that there's always a vertex you can delete that does not change 
uh, your ability to connect to the dense part. So that's um, uh, that's uh, how this works. So I'm not going to talk about that because uh, a this is 20 years old. B this is hard and deep, and C this is not very much relevant to the theorem I want to show you. But but it's true. All right. So this is the undirected case. Now we're done with the undirected case. What about the directed case? Well, uh, so here it's also done uh, because it's semi complete. It's a theorem of Fortune, Hopcroft, and Wiley from 1980. Uh, that even for k equals 2, the problem is that they complete. If I give you a general directed graph and two pairs of terminals, it's then be complete to test whether I can connect him to him and her to her. Uh, well, okay, so since my talk is 48 minutes long and not 3 minutes long, uh, we ask what about special kinds of diagrams? So for general diagrams, it's then be complete, but maybe I can, maybe there are you know, uh, some special classes of diagrams where it's still interesting and yet I can say something. And the answer is yes. Uh, so, what I want to think about is tournaments. What's a tournament? It's when you take a complete graph and you direct the edges. So in other words, for every two vertices in a tournament, either, the, either there is an arc from u to v or there is an arc from v to u. And there are some, uh, right, so here, here's an example of a tournament. So sort of, in, in an undirected graph, right, for every two vertices there are two choices. Maybe they're adjacent, maybe they're not adjacent. In a digraph, in general digraphs, there are three choices. Maybe they're adjacent this way, maybe they're adjacent that way, and maybe they're not adjacent. In a tournament, you're back to having two choices. Maybe you go this way, maybe you go that way. So, I mean, this is sort of philosophy, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's why it works. You know, we can prove something for tournaments while the, the problem is empty complete for, uh, for general directed graphs. Now, okay, so there are tournaments. You can, you can also think about slight variations on tournaments. There's something called a semi-complete diagram. So a semi-complete diagram means I don't allow parallel edges, but I do allow what's called anti-parallel edges. So if I have u and v, I'm allowed to have an edge from u to v and an edge from v to u. I cannot have two edges from u to v, but a direct cycle, cycle of lengths two is okay. That's called semi-complete diagrams. And actually, everything I'm going to say today, or at least all the theorems I'm going to quote, are true for semi-complete diagrams. I'll, I'll talk about tournaments because they're a little bit easier to think about than the game. Uh, going to some complete diagrams is, uh, is, is minimal, but the thing is uh, noticeable. So we'll, we'll talk about tournaments, but really everything I say is true for semi complete diagrams. And then there's something called super tournaments, and that's when, when you allow everything. So the only rule for super tournaments is that between, between every two vertices there's an arc. But then I'm allowed to have parallel edges, I'm allowed to have anti parallel edges, so those, those are what I can all right, anyway, so, uh, and my talk is called uh, Disjoint Mass and Tournaments, so, uh, so you know I'm talking about tournaments. Okay, uh, so uh, we, we still haven't decided if we're thinking about edge disjoint or vertex disjoint, right? Okay? Um, well, so for two uh, pairs of terminals, for k equals two, um, it, both the vertex disjoint case and, and the edge disjoint case are known to be polynomial. Uh, the edge disjoint case was done by, by Ben Jensen in 1991, and then Ben Jensen and Thompson did, um, uh, did the vertex disjoint case a year later. Um, and then, uh, so for general k, right, so this is for two pairs. For general k, both problems were open until recently. And uh, so about well, last year or this year, not, not long ago, Franklin and Seymour uh, we're able to solve the uh, the, the k h disjoint path problem, right? So that's when I give you k pairs of terminals, and uh, and I want to find h h disjoint linkage between them. And their proof idea was sort of um, so uh, it was kind of inspired by the undirected case, except it had uh, uh, it, it also had something else. So in what sense was it, was it inspired by uh, by the undirected case? Well, they they wanted to say, I can always make my graph smaller without, uh, uh, without changing the existence of the solution. And so, right, so this is it's this outcome. There are two vertices that um, you can identify them, and, uh, uh, and uh, the existence of the path doesn't change. Now what's, right, or something else. Right? They prove the theorem that either this or something else. So let me just talk a little bit more about this outcome, and then, and then I'll go to that outcome. So how do they, what are these two vertices that you can identify without, 
uh, without uh, changing the solution. Well, what they do is they find two 